What we believe makes an important impact upon our lifestyles and actions. This sermon is going to be taken from Luke chapter 12. We're going to talk about how our conduct is controlled by what we believe. I want to read from Luke chapter 12, beginning at verse 41, all the way down through verse 46. This is what the Bible says. Then Peter said unto him, Lord, speakest thou this parable unto us, or even to all? And the Lord said, Who then is the faithful and wise steward, whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household, to give him their portion of meat in due season? Blessed is that servant, whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Of a truth, I say unto you that he will make him ruler over all that he hath. But, and if that servant say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to beat the men servants <coughs> and the maidens, and to eat and drink and to be drunken, the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him, and at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in sunder, and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. We live in a time when the doctrine of the Lord's return is under attack. There's only about 48% of believers that believe the Lord is going to come back. There are many pastors that avoid the subject of the Lord's return altogether. Now, back in the 70s, this was a very popular subject. Just about all pastors preached and taught on this, but today, <coughs> but today, that has changed. In fact, in today, it's becoming less and less popular. Well, you would ask yourself, <coughs> why is this happening? Because when you talk about the Lord's return to this earth, it demands that you prepare yourself to get ready to meet Him. It's sort of like when you're expecting company from out of town that are going to come and stay with you. You make sure the bedrooms are ready, the bathrooms are ready, the house is ready, all your supplies, you have enough supplies, <coughs> all of these things. So, if you're going to talk about the Lord's return, it's impossible to talk about it without speaking and considering what will I do to get ready. Now here's another thing. One of the reasons why people don't want to think about this subject and this doctrine is because it suggests <coughs> that their life will be suddenly interrupted. <laughs> and people just don't want their life interrupted. We want to continue our lives as it is with everything going along just fine. Now, we've been interrupted by this coronavirus, and um, I mean, that's why I'm videoing this tape, this uh, sermon, because uh, we can't have a gathering here at the church. So, at this point right here, our services are dismissed until Sunday, April the 5th. Another reason that this subject is not very popular today is because it makes you ask the question, am I ready? 
<coughs> it makes you ask the question, is my life in order? So it makes you think about these things. Uh, if the pastor preaches about it, if a teacher teaches about it, <coughs> then you must ask the question, so will I be ready? And most of us have enough understanding about the Word of God to know the penalty for not being ready is that we will be left behind. We don't want that. We don't want that to happen. Simon Peter asked the Lord a question here in verse 41. Are you speaking this parable uh, to us or to everyone? Uh, <clears throat> well, the Lord began by answering Simon's question by telling this story about a faithful steward or a, a steward that had been faithful but became unfaithful because <coughs> of what he believed. Now, the Lord is coming back to catch away his bride. <coughs> this is not going to be pre-announced. The Lord is not going to send us a letter notifying us of the day and the hour. We don't know that. In fact, he said, uh, no one knew that. He said the angels didn't know that. He didn't know it. Only his father knew that. Now, all attempts at trying to set a date or a time for this event to happen has only ended up in embarrassment. In these verses in Luke chapter 12, the emphasis is not on when. The emphasis is not on what day. The emphasis is not on what year. The emphasis is on be ready. Now, the Lord could not have spoken more plainly about this. He said, in this, in this lesson tonight, He says, the Lord is going to come back when this steward is least expecting. So, <clears throat> now when Peter asked the question, Lord, are you speaking this parable unto us or even unto all? The parable that he is referring to is talking about how the Lord is going to come back and that many people would be unprepared for that. And he told the story about a man that had a house and that the house was going to be robbed or broken into by a thief. And, he, and the parable was this. If this man in this house knew that the thief was coming, Jesus said if he knew the hour, uh, then he would be ready. He would watch. He would uh, get ready for this thief. And he would be able to protect his house. But the, the emphasis here is that he didn't know. He didn't know when the thief was coming. There was no way for him to prepare. <coughs> because there was no time given. So this sermon now is about um, allowing your conduct to impact, to be impacted by what you believe. Uh, <clears throat> Verse 45, 
But and if that servant say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming. This is a very dangerous thought to have. What we believe makes a major impact upon our lives. What we believe makes a major impact upon our conduct. What I'm talking about is our day-to-day -day lives. What we believe determines what road we're going to take. Uh, these truths actually control our lives. This man in this lesson tonight, he said, my Lord has delayed his coming. He is not coming back. That was a serious mistake. And that controlled his life. We're going to see that in just a minute. This mistake that he made in believing that the Lord had delayed his coming is going to impact his whole life. Now, I'm talking to you about this fact that the Lord is going to return because I want us to believe the right things. Where are we going to get the truth? What will be the source of the truth? We hear a lot today about fake news. Almost every day, there is a news reporting agency that gives out information that is wrong. If you read much on the internet, you'll understand much of the internet, the information on the internet, is wrong. It's not true. So you can't believe that. Just recently in this crisis that we're having with this uh, virus, uh, there was information that went out on the internet that was totally wrong. You have to be very careful where you get your information. You have to be very selective about your source of information. Well, I have to tell you, the best place to get information is not from surveys. The survey says only 48% of believers think that Jesus is coming back. That's not a good place to get that information. We get our information from the Word of God. <coughs> we have to ask ourselves, what does God say about this doctrine? What does God say about this? Well, we, <coughs> we have studied the Bible enough to understand and to know there is enough scriptures in the Bible to more than prove the Lord's return. The Lord himself said this many, many times. If I go away, I'm going to come again. Now, you can believe that. that is a, the Bible is a good source of information. Some have forsaken that and decided to believe other things. The question I want to ask us uh, tonight is this. What if we depend on the wrong source? Well, <laughs> the result of that would be disaster. Now, the Lord illustrated this by describing this negligent and unfaithful servant. Now, it appears that this man started off pretty good. The reason that I'm saying that <coughs> is because in verse 42, he was selected by the Lord himself. That is, the master of the house. He was, this is a wealthy man. He was selected and he was made ruler over his Household. This was very common in those days. Uh, Joseph was made ruler over Potiphar's house. Uh, finally, Joseph was made ruler over the entire state of Egypt. So this man was selected. This man knew the truth. 
This man was well informed. This man was trusted and was given his position by his master. Now his drastic mistake was he failed to believe what his master said. He came to believe the master has delayed his coming. He's not going to come back when he told me. He has delayed his coming. He is not coming back. I, so I have time to do whatever I want to do. The master had given him a charge. He had said to the, him, given him exact in-depth instructions. Now, this man, this steward, this servant, who started out being a faithful servant and a wise steward, Jesus called him, he came to believe that the Lord wasn't really coming back. And this appealed to him because this gave him some freedom to do what he wanted to do. He thought he had plenty of time. He forgot who was in charge. He was a steward. He was not the master, even though he sort of took on the role of being the master. He was a steward. He was put in charge by the master to carry out the master's will. Now he went from being an obedient servant. Look at verse 45. Now the first thing he did, he went from being a, o, o, a, an obedient servant to being a ruthless dictator. The first thing he did is he began to beat and abuse the men's servants and the maids. He began to be a very abusive. He had not been. He didn't start out being an abusive servant. If he had, the Lord would never have put him in charge. So now this man has changed. This, he went from being an abusive dictator to being a glutton. He began to, it said, it said and to eat and drink. So now he's turned his attention from doing what the Lord wants him to do to beating his servants, eating and drinking, and then he progressed from eating and drinking to being a drunkard. Well, the master's instructions were replaced by his own. He said, the master's not coming back. I won't have to give attention anymore to what the master has said. I am in charge now. He convinced himself that his master's words were not reliable. When he did that, when he made that decision, the master's words are unreliable. This made him change his conduct it made him change his actions. It changed his way of, of managing his master's servants. It changed his eating habits. And it changed him into a drunkard. Do you see what an impact on what this man believed changed his whole life? He was not even a shadow of who he was when he was given the responsibility of stewardship. Now, so, when he began to live in doubt of his master's word, his relationship was drastically changed with those whom he was put in charge of. This man had a total change in his lifestyle, in his character.
character, in his goals. This man totally, totally changed. It wasn't long before the Master's words became words of the past. He replaced his Master's words with his own words. This man became a very arrogant, proud, unfaithful, disobedient servant. He did that because his belief changed. He, be, he started by being a very faithful, wise student. Now he has ended up being an abusive master, a glutton, and a drunkard. You, could ask, you ask yourself the question, how did this man go from being such a wise man faithful steward to becoming an abusive glutton and drunkard. That all happened because he changed his belief. His belief in the beginning was the Lord is coming back. I have to do the right thing. His belief in the end was the Lord delayed His coming. I can do my own thing. I have plenty of time. I am not going to do what the Lord said. <clears throat> when He made that decision to change His beliefs, and maybe He didn't know this, He also made a decision to change His actions and His conduct. Because conduct is controlled by what we believe. Oh, we have to be very careful about what we believe. There are some people who say, well, it doesn't make any difference what you believe. We all serve the same God. Well, uh, there's only one God. We know that. Not everybody serves Him. Some do. But the problem is when only 48% of believers believe that Jesus is going to return, we have a serious problem in the church. So the church has decided not to accept the Word of God and to go off on its own and to create its own doctrines. Well, I don't want that to happen to the West New York Church of God. It didn't take long for this man's lifestyle to change and to be replaced with his own lifestyle. And it didn't take long until him to lose all of his memories of his master. We have to remember, we have to be care very careful what we believe, because that's going to control who we are. And I want us to be the right people. Let's pray. Lord, we're so glad for this lesson that we've studied today. Lord, you've helped us to understand who we are is controlled by what we believe. Oh, Lord, we have so many doctrines today, so many beliefs today. Oh, God, help us to stay with the Word of God. Lord, we don't want to be like this uh, unfaithful steward. We don't want to leave what we believe and, and believe something that might be a little bit better for us in this life. We want to stay with the guidelines, the rules, the restrictions, and everything. Lord, because we know that you're coming. So, Lord, I just ask you today, help us. Help us at this church. Help every member of this church. Help every person that sees this video. Help them to say, I won't listen to anything but the Word of God. Bless us and help us. We ask all of these things in the name of Jesus. Amen.